the technology that makes anything manifest in the earth is that the spirit and the bride say come so let's answer the question why pray what is the foundational um revelation behind this call to prayer is it just to feel spiritual is it just to have power is it to ease the guilt of laziness spiritually why pray i will tell you and i want you to please listen the foundation or the foundational revelation that necessitates this whole subject of prayer is embedded in something god put within man i want you to listen please listen carefully genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 gives us the first biblical account of man's creation as we know and god said verse 26 let us make man in our image that is a very important word our image and after our likeness let us make man the first reason the foundational reason why men must pray is in the very design of man how god made man to function so the bible says god made man in his image the image of god is a spiritual quality are we together now and then to function means the way men function two hands two feet to speak to hear and all of that now god gave man a very unique gift at the point of creation that gift is called the wheel everybody say the wheel one more time say the wheel as simple as this sounds it is a very 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 important subject that god gave man in creating man he gave man a unique ability called the wheel the power to make decisions the power to make choices and from the moment god gave man that unique gift that unique ability god designed that ability in man such that as far as he's alive nothing should sustain the power to take away the will of man the only thing that can take the power of man's will is death so the moment a man dies he no longer has the ability as much as the bible reveals to make any choice any decision at all upon the earth but for as long as a man is alive he is able to use that gift of the will to make choices but there are implications to giving that gift that gift meant that god would never assume anything about man again from the time man received the gift of the will man had a mandate to always verbalize his intentions verbalize his needs communicate his desires it seemed as if it became illegal for god to superimpose into man's space bringing anything at all without that man making demands of it are we together now i hope you know that with gifts come responsibility if i give you a car while i'm congratulating you for receiving the car keys it comes with responsibilities you need to know how to maintain the car to fuel the car the next time you call me to give you a lift i'm going to ask you how about the car i gave you so god gave man a unique gift but with that gift came a very serious responsibility this is the foundation for prayer if you do not understand this your prayer life will be acting you will be tired you will be weary you will backslide and repent backslide and repent until you backslide with no need for repentance again this is a lot of many believers and the reason is because they do not even understand the foundational revelation upon which prayer is built so back to my story god gave man a will and from the moment God gave man a will can you imagine that God in his might his wisdom would have to allow man to use that will that God designed his work with man from the time he gave man we a will to be a response system that means man would have to use that gift of will to communicate his desire to communicate the need for help are we together now and that God would not assume even though god left something in his dealings with man called his mercy 
and there is a reason why he left it there because there are times man would have the need but because of ignorance or oppression he would not know how to call upon God at that point mercy becomes another door that God can still follow and help man if God did not add mercy all men may die maybe within a week because you will be learning that we do not know what to pray for as we ought to and so there are many times we have received help in our lives that were not directly credited to our asking we did not know, even know that we needed it God left his mercy are we together he wrapped up his relationship with man such that even though he gave us a will he still put his mercy as the platform for his relating with man if you're following say amen, amen. so why pray Matthew 7 and verse 7 Jesus is teaching now Matthew 7 and verse 7 why pray because God gave man a will and he desires that man uses that will the ability to choose the ability to make petitions Jesus says it this way ask and it shall be given to you understand that this is Jesus teaching ask he says and it shall be given to you we are safe to reverse it refuse to ask and even though it is available it will not be given to you then he says seek and ye shall find knock he says and it shall be opened unto you verse 8 for everyone that asketh receive it who receives the one who asks not the one who wants many believers want many things from God many believers desire many things from life but the Bible says the receiver receiving is a reward for asking everyone that asketh receiveth and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh the Bible says it shall be opened why do we pray the Bible mandates that receiving only responds to asking Matthew Mark 11 and verse 24 Mark 11 24 Jesus again is teaching therefore I say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray not if ye pray not you are advised to pray when ye pray it says believe that ye receive them are you seeing now so we now connect asking to prayer and receiving is it making sense now remember it is only those who ask that receive and now Jesus is introducing something between asking and prayer that the way we ask is in prayer so that we receive so we can connect this with Matthew 7 7 that everyone that asketh in prayer is the one who receives are we together why pray because only those who ask using the gift of the will that God has given them receive this is very important when you have your phone most of us here have phones and um, you have within your phone the ability to call call a helpline call a friend am I right on that now if you need say you have access to my number and I told you you can call me anytime did you know that if you fail to call assuming there's no network problem there's no recharge card problem and then you do not call me you see you can be in danger but I have bound myself by my word that if you refuse to call I assume you are safe or I assume whatever trouble you are having is within your power to deal with it I have taught you that the greatest demonstration of humility is prayerfulness when you are prayerless you are proud it's a declaration of independence that you do not need the strength the wisdom the assistance of heaven are we learning now this is very important ask and it shall be given seek and you shall find knock and the door shall be opened unto you so every time you go to the place of prayer you are making use of this unique gift that God gave everyone your will you are verbalizing your desire whether expressing it in love in fellowship whether expressing it as uh, receiving answers to petitions and whatever it is if you fail to exercise that will in prayer you will live a defeated life even though you are saved you would think being born again should exempt you from prayer there are many believers who are saved 
but because they do not understand the prayer ministry nor how to utilize this gift of the will the hymn writer says oh what needless pain we bear there are certain pains there are certain battles that are needless if only we know how to use this gift of the will to call for help hallelujah many years ago i used to watch wrestling there's something they call wrestling and uh, there's an aspect of that wrestling called tag team remember where two people fight two people one will usually stand outside the ring and hope that his other colleague does a good job but sometimes things go really bad things go really sour especially for the other one they will beat the living daylight out of him and while he's there gasping for breath the other guy is energized and angry just hoping he can touch him you see remember and he can stretch while the other one draws him back calls his brother but for some he can muzzle energy just enough and sometimes that can be the difference between winning or losing stretch himself almost unto death and touch the other brother and once that other one jumps inside the ring he can even defeat two of the people at once and within minutes victory is declared that's how prayer is that the man may be weak may not have the power but there is a system of assistance but that there are rules of engagement even though the other one is mighty in fact almighty in this case but then he stands at the other side waiting respecting his own word that if you believe that you do not have the power to run your life you show that you need him very fast still back to my subject of the wrestling there are some who don't even allow themselves to be beaten after the first punch they quietly that is wisdom because eventually they will still beg for help so why delay after you have been beaten blessed is he who comes in the name of our God Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Are we learning now? So the first thing I want you to know is why we pray. Anyone who does not pray is not exercising the gift of the will that God gave him. You are wasting the privilege, the advantage and the leverage of an invincible God, I hate to use the word ally, but since he's called us co-laborers with him, it's safe to say there is, there is an ally that is indestructible, the creator of the ends of the earth, waiting to coordinate the resources of heaven to your advantage. But the only thing he says, we have not because we ask not, not because Satan is powerful. Men like E.M. Bounds will show that there is power that is contained in the place of prayer. If only believers knew the unlimited resources that could come to them from heaven, most believers would take prayer seriously. It would not just be about impressing a man of God or impressing a group of people or showing through social media you are anointed. The, the, the need for prayer is bigger than that, that your life literally depends on it. How could you know that you are sitting before such a leverage and then reject it you have to be ignorant are we together again I give you my card say and that card cons con you know has some money in it and I'm telling you when you get to the mall when you get to whatever it is you have unlimited access you use the card all I need you to do is inform me and then you use it I don't need to give you it's with you but I'm saying the condition is inform me there is something I will tell the bank when you inform me and it makes the card active immediately you can roam around the mall in pain you can roam around while your children cry mommy can't we eat daddy can't we eat that card looks like there's money in it and you can arrogantly swipe it and it does not work because the condition is to inform me but if you are childlike enough to inform me in one moment you can fill your trolley with baskets of provisions oh what needless pain we bear many believers do not know that the real victory of the believer the real victory of the believer is coordinated and released in the place of prayer are we learning we pray because God gave us the gift of the will 
and for as long as we know and learn the dynamics of exercising that will verbalizing communicating our desire our helplessness our challenges our frustrations god is more than willing he is bound himself with a covenant that for every believer who uses the gift of that will to call upon him that he will coordinate the resources of heaven to the advantage of that believer shout i will pray, I will pray. one more time say i will pray what you just said is I'm ready to be victorious. What you just said is I'm ready to walk in partnership with God. I am tired of walking alone. Life is not that hard. It is hard when you are walking alone. But when you have a trusted ally, proven the creator of the ends of the earth, you are able to walk as frail as you are. You will look indomitable because of the one who stands behind you. The Bible says he stands behind you as a mighty, terrible one. Mighty, terrible one. I want to make an altar call right now calling two people in one number one those who are saying i truly need jesus in a hurry and right now and then those who are saying apostle i want to rededicate my life to christ it doesn't matter what is right or wrong in your life when you come to him you will in no wise cast away please lift your right hand with me as a sign of surrender to this jesus and say after me as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus tonight I have heard your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever i'm a child of god washed by the blood of the lamb i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your lovely hands father we thank you please keep lifting them as i pray for you your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away these precious ones have come declaring your lordship over their lives and in the name of jesus i pray that based on the authority of god's word i declare your sins forgiven i call you bona fide recipients of the life of god i declare that you will go from glory to glory and grace to grace that everything that is not of god it must give way in the name of jesus christ you are empowered by the spirit the same spirit that raised christ from the dead that same spirit empowers you to live a victorious life in the name of jesus go from glory to glory for in jesus mighty name i pray amen and amen